Hello everybody, this is the Southwest Florida Tech Net, and today I'm going to be doing a tour of my ham shack. It's not much of a shack, it's more of a garage, but it'll do. So we're going to start here with the main part of my shack, and that is my go box. And I use it as a go box, and I also use it as my setup for at-home use. So it's a cube made out of PVC pipe with two shelves on it made out of plywood, and then the radios are screwed down and zip-tied down. So the main HF rig we have here is a Kenwood TS440S. Still works nice and good. As you can hear here, I was doing some slow scan TV earlier. And I got this for about 100 bucks at the swap shop because we thought it did not work, but it turns out it works fine. For powering everything, I have a Samlex power supply here. I believe it's a 35 amp power supply. Then I've got one of these here. I'm not exactly sure what these are called, but it's an MFJ... Uh, whatever that is, MFJ Deluxe Multiple DC Power Outlets. And then I just have some assorted equipment sitting up here like a Hammett Up Up Converter and a lightning detector. Then if we go down to the second shelf, the bottom floor, we have a Kenwood TR7400A. It's a pretty cool radio. I've had it repaired once because the finals died on it a while back, but now it's back to working. I don't have an antenna connected to it right now. The main radio I use is the, the Asu FT8900R. Really fantastic radio, and I have all my local repeaters programmed in, as well as uh, air traffic control for local airport, and some other things. Then over here, I have another Kenwood. This one's a TR7850. I believe it's a 35 watt radio, two meter only. This radio is also not connected to an antenna, and I only have one VHF UHF antenna, and that's gonna be on this here. I also have an external speaker for the 8900 as well. For the Kenwood down here, I actually made a custom breakout inside the circuitry that allows you to inject a tone for modern repeater use. It has an offset switch, but it doesn't have a tone board, so I have to make this cable comes out of the side here and runs up into this tone encoder. This is also connected to the power supply, and if whatever tone I want, I can flip the little knob here and get a tone. It works really well. Then, of course, we have a Morse code keyer here connected up to the Kenwood. And that works pretty well. For the other assorted mess on my desk, I have my keyboard and mouse, computer monitor. I've got this uh, Zello, Zello phones. I actually have two Zello radios here. I've got my Yesu cup, which is super cool. I've got uh, my main handheld and then my other handheld collection here. I've also got this weather station, which is outside on, the, on a little post. It gives me wind readings and temperature, as well as rainfall amount and other information. Now if we go underneath the desk, we have a UPS here, which provides power in the event of a power surge or blink, and it's gotten a lot of use out of that. Then we have the main computer here. I've got a custom-built machine. It's got NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super for the graphics card, and AMD Ryzen 1600 for the CPU. And then I have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and pretty standard cooling for a system like this. I did have to replace the motherboard recently because the one I had in here died. But now it's back up and running and it works great. I've got Linux on it and I really like it. Now we're going to move to the outside part and I just want to show this. I have so many cables coming out of the house and going to my various uh, antennas outside. I really need some kind of box on the wall that I can pass these through. One more thing before we move on to the antennas. I have an airplane tracker here tracking all these planes and I have made a custom USB cable out of Ethernet that runs all the way out here and up to this little box screwed to the fence. Inside there is an RTL SDR and that's a custom made quarter wave ground plane antenna. So here's the tower as it looks whenever it's down. We had some severe weather move through yesterday so I lowered it. All the cables run along the side of the fence here on the ground into a big old mess and then they come up here up to the top. So the first accessory on my tower is this real link camera. This is the camera that you see in the weather streams. I have it pointing in the direction that most of the storms come from, so you can see them approaching and you can see the lightning in the clouds. And if we go a little bit further up, we have the center of the 40 meter inverted V dipole. This is actually a linked dipole, so it has these little connectors that you can unlink to make to change the active band. So here's the 40 meter dipole, then we go up even further and we have this light. This light fades on and off at night, it looks pretty cool. Then we have the Comet GP1 antenna. This is the dual band 2 meter 440 antenna. This is what my Yaesu 8900 is connected to. It performs really, really well and it sits all the way at the very top of the tower at a height of about 32 feet. 
Then at this corner of the fence, we have the weather station. It just sits on top of a PVC pipe and monitors the weather. The pipe is not very sturdy. You can see I can actually flop it around pretty easily and whenever there's strong gusts of wind it does move. It doesn't really affect the reading as much aside from the rainfall amount. It'll tip the sensor. And now we're going to raise up the tower. And there you go, a fully extended tower with 40 meter inverted V and Comet GP1. As you can see, I have one singular guy wire which runs down to the fence here. And the reason that's there is because it's the only place I can really guy it to. And it reinforces the antenna because the wind comes from that direction most of the time. And there you have it. That's the KM4OVZ ham radio station. Hope you enjoyed.